If you nearly you missed, hit. that means you hit. City Public. I'm Dutch. Jules here. Dylan. And welcome to another one of our drink throughs. That's right, a drink through. This is where we pick a lineup of spirits to drink through and discuss. And in this episode, we decided to take a closer look at the very internet popular smoke wagon. I mean, I guess it's popular, popular. But yeah, exactly. What's the difference? If you're on the Instagrams, I mean, smoke wagon is like the hottest bourbon out there. Um, this is a product that is an MGP sourced bourbon. Um, a really, uh, they've got a great Instagram channel, I gotta say. The uh, one of the co-owners and the master blender, I guess, Aaron Chepnik, I think is his name. Um, you know, he does a great job of actually kind of letting you in the door and seeing the blending process and talking about what goes into each of the different um, iterations that they put out. Uh, now, this isn't the complete lineup. We are missing the 10-year-old Desert Jewel. And they also have, um, I think, barrel picks that, that are out there that we don't have one of those here either. But this is the core lineup. This is their um, kind of regular issue straight bourbon, their small batch bourbon, and their um, uncut, unfiltered. This is the Dylan juice down here. It's got to be high proof for Dylan to like it. I love it. Um, I remember trying one of these in Vegas, and I think it was the small batch. You said it was the uncut? Yeah. I stood behind you, and uh, you passed me the, 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 the glass? liquor. Yeah, and I, I tried it. It was the uncut. You sure? Okay. Well, I don't remember it, obviously, because it was Vegas, and that happens there. But um, Jules, have you tried any of these? Uh, I feel like I've tried, actually, the regular. The regular? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I do mean, remember. We reviewed the 10-year-old. I mean, that must have been... Over a year ago, mm. so yeah, I think I think we tried the ten year and we were not blown away by it. Yeah, I think compared to everything else on the market right now, um, it wasn't standing out yeah. as much as we would like. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it also may have changed in the past year. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it was a while ago. So let's get cracking into this. Let's start with the uh, small batch. All right, let's get a close-up of the bottle here. A nice, uh, for the most part, pretty clear bottle. You know, it's got this quite a bit of design on the front of it. Um, this stuff is out of Las Vegas, so I believe they buy the barrels from MGP, have them shipped to Vegas, and they do all the uh, the blending in, in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because there are so many MGP-sourced bourbons out there now doing all kinds of things, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there are other companies that say that they get uh, creme de la creme from MGP. Um, right. Well, I feel and like that's many. That. Yeah, they, I mean, yeah. you know, they, that's what they say. Um, if you remember Old Scout, for example. Right. Um, you know, but there are so many different types out there. Right. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting um, how they could potentially stand out amongst the pack. So this is um, from barrels that are hand-selected from the top two floors of their warehouse. Um, I believe it, I read somewhere that it was non-chill filtered, but it doesn't actually say it anywhere on the bottle. So that might be the small batch that I'm thinking of. But um, Anyway, let's give it a taste and see how this one is. Kind of a grainy nose. With a bit of sweet. Whoa. Yeah, so what, oh. are, you, what, are, you, what are you tasting here? I get that. I get a grain hit. I agree. And I get uh, I get sweetness Sweet. after that. And it's very drinkable. Very. This one is really fact, actually. What's the proof on this? Good question. This is sixty four point two five percent, ninety two point five. So a little bit on the low end. It, it tastes like it. To me. Really? I think it's got a little I feel bit. Like of it burn. punches up. Yeah. I don't 
know. This, to me, it, it's not. <laughs> to me, it's pretty drinkable. Yeah, it's really good. I think the hardest part for me is the finish. Yeah, mm. there's mm. there's it lingers a really. Uh, it, it's really harsh for me. Yeah, I'm sorry I get, to say. I get an initial on the swallow, I get a little bit of harshness, but then it tapers, tapers, and I get a lot of flavor on the. Yeah. On the back How of much it. did you pay for this? That one, I believe, thirty-two mm. ish. Yeah. So for thirty some, I mean, sometimes it's marked up, but I think for the most part, you can get it around here for around thirty bucks. Yeah. Um, you think that it's equivalent, better, worse than all the other thirty dollar offering? You know, if you like from the big distillers, I mean, what's like a thirty dollar? I mean, maybe Buffalo, regular Buffalo Trace. That's even more. I mean, mm-hmm. Woodford, right? Woodford would come Woodford. to mind. Four roses. I think it offers a counterpoint to Woodford. I don't know that I'd say it's better. Mm. Necessarily, I think Woodford maybe has a more well-rounded flavor. This skews a little bit to the grain and the sweet for me, less of the spice. You, you talk about the grain. What about something like Jim Beam Distillers Cup? Not a bad analogy. You know, this is why it's a little hard for me to say. But that's okay. around thirty bucks. That's like twenty-seven, twenty-five, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's priced for a craft. Mm-hmm. Distiller to be able to put out a bourbon at around thirty bucks. Yeah. That we would say, yeah, it's kind of like Distiller's Cut. Maybe it could kind of compete with Distiller's Cut in Woodford. That's not bad. That's that's I think what somebody would want from their introductory bourbon to their line. Yeah, I think for this, if you do buy this, I think this is for people who um, drink it with ice. Mm-hmm. I think you know a, a big cube of ice. This is or the background a, bourbon. Yeah, yeah. This so, is the one you're you're, drink, you're sipping at the barbecue. That's why it's perfect for Vegas. You're chilling out in the heat with an ice cube. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Playing, uh, poker? Yeah, should, yeah. That should be chilled. Yeah, this would be great chilled slightly. I mean, this would be a really nice just sipping, chilling out bourbon. That is good. Um, I don't think it blows us away on any one no. flavor aspect. Right. But it's... Yeah, it's it doesn't all, stand out. It fits that, in the box. Right. Yeah, it know? fits in there. It fits yeah. in the box really nicely. All right. I'm interested to see how things evolve when we move on to the small batch. We're going to get some fresh glasses and be right back. All right. Moving on to the small batch. Dylan, you got this bottle. Yep. What is uh, what a kind of price point are we looking at on this? Got it for bottle? forty-five bucks. Forty-five bucks. I love that that medallion in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. That's a really cool look. I mean, it is it's a Morgan a, Silver Dollar. It yeah. is a dark bottle, you know. Yeah. And um, we should we should we should point out that in that medallion there, I think you can read it. There's some Latin writing. Yeah. Do you guys know what that means? Baramus Vito Veritas Moriendum Est. I mean, I, I speak only Aramaic, but I do think... <laughs> you dabble in Latin, I know. Yeah, I do think it means, let us drink, death is certain. So, I love it. Right, what a fantastic Drink up. Right? Drink up. See, uh, Ringo man. is an educated man. <laughs> nah, I really hate him. <laughs> Dude, I actually like the uh, texture of the bottle. I, I love it. it cool. I, you it know was. what? I do think it would be better if it was clear, though. I, I was yeah. really close to making a non-Puritan joke there, but <laughs> I'm going to refrain. <laughs> Dude, you got to tell us yeah, what it was. What, what no, was I was going to say, no. We, I was, can just, bleep, we can bleep the whole okay, thing. Okay, so you got to bleep this, okay? I just said, really. Oh. Dude, I'm gonna amplify that. No, we'll do like witness protection. We'll blur your face out and change it. No, it's gonna be blurred like Pixelated. this. And I'll, no, it's a like this. Um, all right, so the small batch, um, I believe this is um, four and five year old MGP distillate. Oh, and maybe man. this is the one that is uncut. Huge change, right? Oh my gosh. I mean, MCF. huge difference. Huge Evolution. difference from this. Evolution. Oh, there's like a richness wow. on the nose. Richness. Uh, uh, caramel. Uh, on the creamy. Mm. It, it, it's like. 500% mm. more potent in terms of the aroma, right? You can get the molasses, yeah. the honey. You start to check off the boxes, right? I just think it's delicious, oh. man. Yeah, delicious. Oh, man. Mm. The, the, the body, the mouthfeel, everything is cranked up. The, so I would say for this, when you drink this, um, which is the regular production, about 75% the way through, you get this really harsh kind of caustic uh, kind of flavor that comes and hits you. Yeah, it's this one, you don't, spice. Right. This one, it no. doesn't have that. It's In like fact, this out. is where, you know, like the finish starts to evolve, evolve a little bit. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, it's not as long as I would like. No, sure. And it's not as complex as, you know, some of the other offerings. Mm-hmm. But it's a, you know, it's a... You know what? There's a nice 
hit of spice to this. Oh, that's it's great. solid. I, I think mean, it's a solid offering. What's our proof on this? Fifty percent. So hundred proof. Hundred proof. Nice. Nice. Perfect spot great. for a bourbon. Nice. Oh, yeah. Small batch. Um, you know, I, I love watching Aaron's uh, Instagram things because he talks about blending the small batch. And sometimes he'll be like, hey, you know what? I tried to make this blend the other day. And last time I did it using barrels from this location, I did it this time, but it was off. So I had to add some of this one to balance that. I mean, I love hearing that kind of stuff because yeah. that, I mean, I mean, I know we all love the idea of, of batched bourbons right. and consistency as being what's impressive from a art. distillery. Right. That's really cool. I mean, I, to, I, to get that insight is awesome. I think it's well, awesome that, that transparency. Yeah, that's no, I, mean, I, wanna, I want to drink the skill, right? Yeah. I want to uh, experience mm -hmm. the skill of a master distiller. That's what I want. I don't want somebody. I mean, we we tend to focus a lot on the single barrel, which is single barrel. Yeah. But for me, it's like I want Wonderful. someone who studied this, who understands, who has a right. long history of experience to give me that experience as well. So here's a question for you. Woodford versus this. I mean, I, I keep throwing Woodford because. Yeah, it's a quintessential bourbon. Quintessential bourbon flavor profile. I mean, to me, this has certain I, I like the nose better this one's a little bit more bold and it's a little bit spicier yeah, yeah it's maybe uh, just a little bit i think it's it's got rough edges though but in a good way this doesn't yeah right this you doesn't know? beat around the bush i feel like the woodford has been it's i'm not i'm not saying it's slick in a derogatory term but it's very very um kind it's of refined like, in that um, way like anakin skywalker and he was still a Jedi. When when he was uh, when he, he murdered all the babies. <laughs> no, before that, younglings. Where he was like, you know, hey, this is what a Jedi is supposed to be. Well, no, he's gonna like he's gonna push the envelope in certain directions. Like this thing, it takes like a traditional bourbon flavor profile, and then it pushes through on mm. a few of the flavor components, and it does it in a way that's very impressive to me. I don't know. I, I it's good. I mean, it's I really enjoy this. Good. What was the price point yeah. again? Forty five. Forty five. That's yeah. I think totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came up, I was like, uh, I asked you guys, uh, should we try this? Okay. You bought it online? Yep. Click. And I it delivered. <laughs> I don't want to stop drinking, honestly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I think this would also, because of that level of spice that it has, it would easily su uh, survive an ice cube. Yeah. Like you chill this down, you're in the desert heat, smoking a cigar, chilling out. This could survive and, and really be nice. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I still drink this neat. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think this is for ice folks. Therefore, I probably wouldn't touch this. I wish I could get this in the casinos. Oh, oh yeah. I wish. Oh, right. yeah. That would completely change well, the casino, did, did, casino approach. We could, we could just carry this around like we did last time. Yeah, what, we were carrying a bottle around. Yeah, I was carrying a bottle and what I was walked it? through the pit. Was it Glen Orangey? I think Glen Orangey 19? It might have been, yeah. Or was it Old Scout? <laughs> it was Old Scout, I think. But, you know, basically I, I was carrying the bottle. And I was walking around, and I accidentally went into the pit. I didn't know I was there. And they started yelling at me, but oh, you I didn't knew. even hear anything. <laughs> you knew you were there. You know you were carrying I didn't even hear anything. And you came through, and I was like, dude, what did you just do? Do you realize what you just did? And yeah, like, and then I just said, here. Yeah. Uh, I miss Vegas. I miss being uh, on lockdown, guys. I mean, I hate being on lockdown. Yeah. All right, let's get some fresh glasses and move on to the last installment. All right, on to our final bourbon here from uh, Smoke Wagon. This is the uncut, un unfiltered, finally, straight bourbon. Look at that. The only reason Dylan showed up today. 40, oh, sorry, 56.95% alcohol. Gotta love that. And it's got the black medallion. I mean, look at that. That is so darn cool. Um, again, the tinted bottle, which, you know, it's cool. It's Good really way. cool, but could go either way. There's a part of me that feels like uncut, unfiltered. I want to see that. I want to see that yeah. dark juice. What does it look like? I want to see that sediment. But hey, I guess that, you know, that's what the surprise is. And you get to see it when you pour it. So let's get ourselves poured here. That's a hefty pour. Uh, <laughs> a bottle. Dude, look at the color on this thing, yeah. man. It's great. That is a good looking color. Um, so the... Uh, 56.95%. This is this is batched, so you know every batch might be slightly might be different, different. But um, from what I've read, it tends to be four, oh six, ten, and sometimes even twelve-year-old hmm. distillate in these. And um, you know they dump them, they dump the barrels, and then they just bottle it. 
you know, they get the blend right and then they just bottle it. No cutting with water, oh, nothing. Oh, finally. Wow. I mean, finally a, some bourbon, right? That is a nose, man. Oh. Mmm. I mean, the nose is almost a little harsh. No. There's so much there, though. Mmm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I think you can drink this all day. Uh, it's oh, they're sweet. Mm, it's cherry. very sweet. I it's like cherry on the finish. It's that, you know, it's that. Sometimes mm. when we think about the very high proof, um, unfiltered bourbon, we want that cherry coke, right? We well, sometimes mm. long for it, right? We yeah. say, oh man, we really like want stag. That. Stag has that. Stag has it. Yeah. Stag. Uh, you know, this is. It's not mm. completely. Like cherry coke, but it has uh, a good amount of honey. Oh, oh my god! A this, good amount of this is like dessert to me, guys. Yeah, it's oh really god. sweet. To it's me, really it's sweet. Dessert. To me, this is way better than Stag Junior. Oh, wow. I'm gonna say that. I'm not the biggest fan of Stag Junior, but this is infinitely more drinkable, mm. and I can pick out the flavors more easily. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I've just had bad batches of Stag Junior, but this is way more enjoyable to me. So I think the it's Stag good. Junior. I don't know. I, I feel like. This is lower proof. Yeah, I think Stag Junior. 56. 56 on this one? Yeah, so I think it depends on the batch. 12. For sure. Yeah. Um, I do mm -hmm. like Stag Junior because oh, yeah. it doesn't mess around. Um, perhaps you don't like Stag Junior because, again, your palate we cannot you know, manage no, the look, higher proof. I mean, I, look, I like high proof Common enough. Dutch weak. I, I love the Woodford, right? Because Woodford, I don't get a tannic hit. I've always gotten a slight tannic hit with the batch, with the Stag Juniors. GTS, mm. George C. Stag, I don't tend to get that. Mm. I feel like it's a better oh, yeah. selection there and obviously older. Um, but this, I get nothing off-putting. So I wonder mm. if you if you dilute the, the Stag, Stag Junior. I've tried that. Um, I've tried that. I have tried one of the batches of Stag Junior I got. I think it was like 11. One of the older ones that... I think a lot of people thought it wasn't the best batch. I tried diluting it. I tried everything. I, all I got was the tannic barrel taste. Mm. And it just wasn't great. I mean, and I know there are other batches that are fantastic, um, but I would put this up there with a lot of other foolproof bourbon and say, yeah, maybe it's a little lower proof than some of them, but man, the flavors deliver. Yeah, this is delivering oh, quite a bit. And I would say, I mean, I don't, I really am not a fan of this. I will be. I will admit. I think these two are definitely worth trying. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I would have, obviously, on my shelf. Yeah. I think out of the out good. of the three, this is this is what I will be drinking. This is what I, what I would grab. And if you are a bourbon drinker, this is what you'll have. Totally. You know, if you if you come over to the, to my house. By the way, I should mention price point on that. I was able to get that bottle for I think sixty five. Wow. Which is pretty cheap, and I, I bought it cheap. actually at a, a store that's. Uh, very well known for his tequila, and they do have a decent whiskey selection, but like they don't pay as much attention to their whiskey, I guess. So I got it at a fantastic price. Um, I think easier to maybe find it in the $75, $80 dollar range. Um, with a lot of the hype, it's been priced crazy high. Um, Some parts of the country, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. know. I mean, to me, at seventy bucks, this is a steal. Oh yeah, I think yeah. For that price, you definitely should pick yeah, this up. Absolutely. I don't know if it's worth the markup mm. because again, at that price, it opens up to so many different offerings. True. And if you wait a little bit, you might be able to get something, you know, with a, a, a longer age, a little bit more robust yeah. flavor. I think it would be an interesting one to blind the uh, uncut with with some of the uh, limited release stuff. I think like a Woodford batch, a, G a, G a George T. Stag. I think it'd be interesting. I don't know, that, I'm not saying it, it could beat them, but I think it could hold its own, honestly. And at hmm. a fraction of the price, I think that's pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, anything that is much cheaper, yeah. um, I mean, MSRP of George C. Stag was at 99 bucks. So. <laughs> right, right, MSRP. Yeah. All right, guys, this has been a really enjoyable uh, drink through for us. Um, H&C, which makes these smoke wagon products, is just next door to us in Vegas, so maybe we should Excellent. go check it out. we got to go check out that distillery. Yeah, that'll be cool. Or, or, you know, blending facility, I guess we should call it. Um, but uh, very interesting products, a very fun drink through, Jules. Yeah, tell us what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you like this episode. Subscribe for more videos from Curiosity Public. Check out our podcast and all the major podcast distributors. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe. Stay curious.
poured myself a lot of this. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> this is good, dude. Yeah, I'm mean, like, I actually think all of these. No, no, no. no I, I think I think the most class. impressive part of all this is yeah. that we have so many different MGP offerings. Yeah, and we are getting these very weird, sometimes interesting offerings. But you know what it is, Standouts. This I mean, is the difference. This is a good standout. The difference of this is this is not just taking MGP and bottling it. Like yeah. there's the blending there's, here. There's another is yeah. what brought this above. Yeah. I agree. There's an the artisanal aspect to it. Though. Like yeah, that's Even what I above. appreciate. Yeah, I love. I, totally I love He's doing a great experiencing job. the skill. That's what I, I love. Agree. I, I wish more brands would do this. this. Yeah, exactly. Like, here's our straight bourbon. Like if Elijah and, Craig did this, well, and be more transparent about it. I mean, dude, it's so it's amazing. I mean, Fort Roses so kind of does it, right? But they don't do not this. like this. They don't yeah, do this. Not, like not this. enough bourbons do this. Uncut, unfiltered, unadulterated. This is what Straight. our distillate is exactly. in its finest. Mm. I mean, George T. It's Stag, I think, is, that's the one, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's hundreds of dollars, and this is right. a fraction of that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, this was really fun. That's really good. 